Elementary, my dear Watson, elementary. No man burdens his mind with small matters, unless he has some good reason for doing so. So let's deduce, or come to some conclusion as to who done it. Oh. Greetings, welcome, please come in. And pardon me fine people, I am the legendary Sherlock Holmes, let me just say, it is my business, to know, what other people do not know. Of course it's no mystery, that the best place to find murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s, is right here on Hastings Mystery Theatre. Stay tuned. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1940 for a Columbia production, Ellery Queen, Master Detective. This is the first in a series of seven Ellery Queen movies Columbia produced during 1940, 41, and 1942. In tonight's movie, the head of a famous health club dies, but his body disappears. Ellery Queen believes the disappearance may hide a murder. He investigates, and his secretary, Nikki Porter, tries to help, but proves mostly a hindrance. Ralph Bellamy stars as Ellery Queen, and Margaret Lindsay has his problematic secretary, Nikki Porter. Ralph Bellamy was born in Chicago in 1904. In age 15, he ran away from home and joined a traveling road show. By age 23, he owned his own theater company and began working on the Broadway stage. And by age 27, he began acting in movies. This was right at the beginning of the sound era, when lots of veteran actors washed out because they could not memorize dialogue or were hard to understand. He acted on stage, screen, television, and radio for over 65 years until his death in 1991 at age 87. Margaret Lindsay was born in Iowa in 1910. She attended the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and then went to England to work on stage. She perfected the perfect English accent and in Hollywood used it to land roles as an English woman. She began working in the movies in 1932 and continued for 52 years before retiring in 1974. She died in 1980 at age 70. Margaret Lindsay was an out-of-the-closet lesbian at a time when such things just were not talked about. She was never an in-your-face advocate for gay rights, but neither did she hide anything. She had appeared in public with her partner Mary McCarty and openly showed her affection. Hollywood loved her talent, but was uneasy around her. Back in the day, if you had gay friends, People might assume you too were gay. Let's return to 1940. Enjoy Ellery Queen, Master Detective.
If you are physically run down, under or overweight, lacking in health and vigor, why not join the countless thousands who have Bonds Home of Health? You too can have the body beautiful. One, two, one. I'm afraid you'll have to work harder than that. After all, you paid to have your body rejuvenated here. We want you to leave satisfied. Perfection has been attained. Now, if you devote sufficient time and effort, you can acquire the perfect health, matchless physique of that living example of bodily beauty, John Braun. Just look at him and decide if it isn't worth the effort. I know there's nothing wrong with me. What's taking them so long to find that out? Oh, be patient, John. They've only been gone a few minutes, and Dr. Rogers asked them to look over the x-rays. I'm afraid you're right, Dr. Rogers. His condition is incurable. Why is it that his resident physician in daily contact with Mr. Braun, you didn't notice any symptoms earlier? Well, I did, for quite some time. And I insisted upon examining him. At first, he wouldn't even hear of it. Finally, he agreed to my taking these x-rays, and then refused to believe my diagnosis of them. Of course, you realize what the last stages of this will be. Yes, and I'll do what I can to ease his pain. Shall we go in, gentlemen? Do you think it wise to tell him what he'll have to go through before... Perhaps he... not, but there's nothing I can do. He insists upon knowing the truth. Rogers is wrong, isn't he? I'm sorry, Mr. Braun, but we must agree with Dr. Rogers' diagnosis. The x-rays leave no doubt. How long have I before... A month? Two months, perhaps. Thank you, gentlemen. If you don't mind, I'd rather be alone. John. Save your sympathy, Lydia. I don't need it. All right. But please. What are you going to do about Barbara? Nothing. You know you want to see her. What do you want me to do, search for her? She left of her own free will. I'll do nothing to bring her back. Oh, I know, Please John. Please leave me alone. My time's too important now to waste on an ungrateful daughter. We're in bed either. My husband's a head of men. He dislikes Dr. Rogers personally. When Barbara told him she was going to marry him, he made such a scene that she left home. Now, that's been almost three months, and we haven't heard from her since. Mrs. Brown, we'll do everything we possibly can to find your daughter. I'll put a man on the case immediately. Lily? Yes, Inspector? Come to my office. Yes, sir. Come on, Ellery, quit stalling and autograph it. Did you buy this book, Dilly? You know I did. I buy all your books. I've missed several from my study lately. Do you think I'd sink so low as to steal a book while I was your guest and then have the nerve to ask you to autograph it? Frankly, yes. All right, I I'll do it for you, but on one condition. Oh, cut it out, Ellery. I've got to go inside. I'm looking for material for my next book. It may be a great idea in Dad's office right now. Okay, I'll let you listen in. Now, autograph it, Scrooge. I'd have autographed it for you anyway. You know that. But next time, bring a sales receipt. Sure, I'll bring. What? Any glory, your husband would know that you were here. Oh, Mrs. Braun, this is Sergeant Dealey. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. How do you do, Sergeant? Did you bring a photograph of your daughter? Well, no, I, I couldn't. Well, why not? Well, Mr. Braun was so angry at Barbara's leaving home that he destroyed all her pictures. Well, I'm afraid we won't have much to work on without the photograph. However, we'll do the best we can. Sergeant, are you listening? Uh, yes, sir. I, I was just concentrating. Mrs. Braun's husband is the famous physical culturist. Oh, I know him. Bodily Beauty, Phil Braun, the monthly magazine. I've read him for years. Wonderful advice in him. <laughs> what I can't understand is why your husband didn't get rid of this doctor instead of driving his daughter out of the house. Oh, but 
he couldn't. You see, he made Dr. Rogers indispensable by building him up as an authority and the chief endorser of his institution. Well, I think you've given us about all the information you can, so I'll turn the details over to the sergeant. Thank you. And I do hope you'll have some good news for me soon. I'm sure we will. Goodbye. You want to see me, son? Uh, I did, Dad, but I can't wait. I'm late for an appointment now. I'll see you at dinner. <laughs> what do you suppose he's after her for? I wouldn't know. Oh, Mrs. Braun. Yes? There's one thing my father forgot to ask you. He wants to know where Dr. Rogers lives. Why, I told him that. The doctor lives at our home, of course. Thanks. It must have slipped his mind. Hello, Jim. Hello, Mickey. How's our patient? She's so much better, I'm having a hard time keeping her in the house. It's Jim, Barbara. Well, come in, darling. Hello, sweet. Hello. Don't you envy me, Nikki? Envy you what? The operation or the doctor? Well, the doctor, you idiot. Dr. Jimmy, who makes appendicitis a pleasure. Come on, sit down. You too, Nikki. Pull up a chair. Uh, no, thanks. I, um... Uh... I have work to do. Look, darling. As soon as you're completely recovered, I want you to go home. But, Jim, I don't understand. Oh, I'm not forgetting that you left home because of me, but your mother's worried about you. I'd like to see Mother. But Dad... As long as I can remember, he's run my life like a gym class. One, two, I jump here. Three, four, I jump there. And after the way he talked about you, I'm not going home. At least not until we get married. And then there's nothing he can do but accept you. <laughs> we'll see. Now, since you can go out tomorrow, I, I'm going to take you for a little ride in the park. The sun will do you good. Marvelous. But why wait till tomorrow? Oh, no, no, no. Listen, I'm the doctor. And you must rest one more day. I don't know what's the matter with me. I can't even get started today. Say, Nikki. I just tried to make Barbara change her mind about going home. Home? Yes. Her, her father is dying. Dying? I tried to tell her just now, but couldn't. But... but she should know. Well, to tell her now might cause a relapse. Besides, his life isn't in immediate danger, and... and Barbara will be better equipped to stand the shock if I wait a few days. Well, I'll... I'll be back tomorrow. See here, young lady. I thought the doctor told you to rest. <laughs> he did. But I wanted to see how you were getting along with your work. Oh, I'm not. Well, I'm afraid it's my being here that disturbs you. You haven't been able to do any work looking after me all the time. I've been able to work all right. The trouble comes in trying to sell it. Look, here's one I finished long before you came. The editor regrets to report that he is unable to use the Persian rug mystery. The author, that's me would do well to stop aping the work of Ellery Queen and should use her imagination on happenings in real life. Note, travel broadens the mind. How do you like that? He's practically accusing me of cribbing from Ellery Queen. Well, maybe you have been influenced a little by him. Oh, I bought those books because I used to think he was good. Ellery Queen. I hate the sound of his name.
Thanks for phoning me, Pinky. Which one is it? It's 1087. The guy just left. It's apartment two. The name is Nicky Porter. Nicky Porter? Sounds like a phony name. Must be the girl I'm looking for. Yeah. Hey. Jim said he wouldn't be back till tomorrow. I better see who it is. Yes, who is it? Your mother sent me to see you, Miss Braun. You have the wrong apartment. Can't you read it? Did someone swipe the nameplate off my door? I know you wouldn't be living here under your own name. Open the door. I'm sorry to intrude, but your mother asked me to bring you home, Miss Braun. Who are you? I'm a private detective. How did you find me? I can find anybody, anywhere. Will you see if you can find my mother and tell her I'm not coming home? Get your things together. You're coming with me. The police are looking for you, too. If I don't take you, they will. It'd be much smarter to let me drive you home. You mean the police are looking for Barbara Braun? For me? That's right, Miss Braun, for you. I, uh, I better pack my bag. Okay, I'll wait. Uh, I'll only be a minute. Don't you worry. I'll go with him. That'll give you time to get in touch with Jim, and he can get you away from here before the police come. All right, Nicky. You're a writer, I see. Yes. How long you been writing? Ever since I left school. I'm ready. Quite a library you have there. Ellery Queen seems to be a favorite of yours. Clever writer, don't you think? I don't. Too trashy. End of the line. Isn't there a caretaker or somebody to open the gate for you? Uh, don't bother, please. It, it's only a few steps to the house. I, I'll walk. Goodbye. Goodbye. Brought you this far. I might as well take you the rest of the way. You're not much of a talker for a woman. The company, no doubt. For a private detective, you are rather dull. Oh, that's just a sideline. Don't tell me your real business is walking delegate for the Traveler's Aid Society. <laughs> Would it help melt the ice if I told you I'm a writer, too? You are? What sort of things do you write? Detective stories. Do you ever sell anything? Everything I put on paper. You know, a good mystery story could be written about this estate, your family, the missing heiress angle. I first got the hunch when I met your mother at headquarters. Headquarters? What have you got to do with the police? You said you were a private detective. My father's Inspector Queen. You don't mean you're Ellery Queen? Yep. You're just about the way I pictured you. Thanks for the ride. Oh, I'd better see you inside. People who visit my house usually wait for invitations. Please, let me have my back. All right, all right. It was just a thought. Wait a minute. Uh, now that we know each other, would you introduce me to your father? I could use him in my next book. Who's my father in a book up? I, I never heard such impertinence. I'm Miss Norris. Can I help you? Uh, oh, uh, yes, I, I had an appointment with Dr. Rogers. What is your name, please? Uh, Nikki Porter. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Miss Porter. Dr. Rogers is engaged right now with Mr. Braun. Will you wait? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. I'll take you upstairs to his office. Uh, 
I don't think Dr. Rogers will be very long. Well, thank you. Mr. Braun, to shut down your health food factories and stores, a, a national institution, why, it's unthinkable. Besides, it's to your family's benefit to keep them running. I know, you've always had the benefit of my family at heart. As your manager, it was always my understanding that in the event of your death, we'd continue to operate the business for Mrs. Braun. Yes, but certain things lead me to believe it would be more to your interest than to my wife's. But what about the radio and advertising contracts? They have years to run and must be paid for regardless. Stop it, it's your own job you're thinking of, every one of you. Benefits, contracts, advertising. Dead man doesn't need publicity. Oh, you mustn't give up hope. Give nature a chance. Come out in the sun again and have faith in your own strength. Neither faith nor nature can change what the x-rays show. Nature is death as well as life. I've made arrangements for you to go to a rest home where you won't have to do any work, Amos. But I like to work in the garden, and I don't want to leave here. You don't understand. You'll be much better off there. No, I won't go. Never, never, never. But, John, the work you've started can't stop. Think of all the people you've helped back to health. We'll carry on just as if you were still running things yourself. She's right, John. I've lived by certain rules of health. I've believed in them, I've built this place by them. My death contradicts everything I've advocated. That's why we can't go on. Just because something happens to you, we all get frozen out. What about the interest in the business that you will to us? Yes. Why not let us sell everything for you? Then we can get the share we're entitled to. None of you are entitled to anything, and that's what you'll get, nothing. I'll make a new will, now, leaving my wife everything. Have you forgotten Barbara? Her mother will see that she's taken care of if she comes back here to live. Stay here, all of you. Barbara has a right to a share in your estate. You're being very cruel and selfish. Selfish? To Barbara or to you? <laughs> if you think I want to marry her for her money, I'll prove your mistake to you today. If that's the way you feel, you won't mind witnessing this will. I'll be glad to. You too, Zachary. That is all. Thank you. We made a fine mess of it, didn't we? I'm sorry, Rocky. I did all I could. Well, we're not going to give up a sure thing like this without a struggle. Give me a little time. I'll get an idea. Better be good and fast. Looking for Mr. Zachary. Left. Thank you. I'll look in his office.
Jack. Hello, Mr. Queen. Uh, the inspector's busy right now. Oh, all right. I'll wait in Feely's office. Yes? Hello, Dad. I just dropped in to tell you Vili's wasting his time looking for Barbara Braun. Hey, what are you talking about? I found her. Well, Vili's here with me now. Suppose you come in and tell him yourself. This is my son, Ellery. Ellery, Dr. Rogers. How do you do? And Miss Barbara Braun. She's an imposter. How could you make such a mistake, Vili? I made no mistake. I picked them up in the city hall just as they were going to get married. What does that prove? Call the Braun house. They'll tell you Barbara's at home. I took her there myself. Then you're the private detective who arrested my friend, Nicky Porter. Oh, oh. Ellery, I'm convinced that you made a mistake, and I hope you didn't misrepresent yourself. You better find Miss Porter and apologize. It'll be a pleasure. I knew I'd find you still here, Miss Porter. And I know what you've been up to. You stole my idea. You've been pumping Mr. Braun for material. Shh. Let him hear me. I don't care. He can't hear you. He's dead. In there. Jugular vein's been cut. What happened? Who did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, who else was here? Nobody. At least nobody came to the study after Mr. Braun accidentally locked me in there. Sure. I'm positive. There's another door over there. Thanks. I never would have found it. Can't be opened. Nobody could have squeezed through here. The only entrance to this room is through the study, through that door. Young lady, you're in one beautiful mess. You're not accusing me. I'm not, but the police will. But that's ridiculous. I didn't do it. Look, uh, couldn't he have committed suicide? Right not. If he had the weapon, it'd still be here. But I told you nobody came in. That's why everything points to you. You're bad. It's all your fault. You brought me here. You've got to get me out of this. I can't help you. Oh, yes, you can. Your father's a police inspector. He'll believe you if you tell him I had nothing when to do with it. When the police learn the facts, they'll grab you. Nothing I could say would stop them. But I tell you, I didn't do it. You're going to have one heck of a time explaining. What do you mean? Get out of here, fast. Miss Barbara! Oh, I'm so 
glad you're back. Thank you, Bella. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Miss Barbara's here. Wait a minute. My apartment's much more comfortable than jail. Here's the address. Wait there for me, then we'll decide what's to be done. I hope you know what you're doing. Sure, I know what I'm doing. Hiding a murder suspect. Hurry up before somebody sees you. I promised your daughter that if she'd come home, I'd have a talk with her father and see if things were straightened out between them. Well, he's up in his rooms. Mm -hmm. I'll have Miss Norris take you up. Oh, Miss Norris! I'll show the inspector the way up. I think you'd better see him alone. It wouldn't help matters to have me alone. I understand. Come in. What are you doing here? Hello, Dad. I was just trying to get you. Where's Mr. Braun? Yes, uh, Mr. Queen sent me here. Mr. Ellery, I presume. Yes, he said for me to tell you I was to wait for him. All right. Come this way, please. Thank you. You better wait in his study. You'll find something to read in there. Here. You can look at this while you wait. And don't tell me you read it. Because nobody has. It just came from the publisher. You know, there's nothing I like better than a real good murder. Don't you? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I do. Ms. Brown told me that it was her husband's intention, owing to ill health, to wind up his business and he made a new will. Cutting all of you out. We're not denying that. But you can't deny that you are the only ones that would profit by the disappearance of this new will, leaving this old one in force. I know you only have alibis, and they may stand up, and maybe they won't. Well, that'll be all. We find Miss Norris, the receptionist, and bring her up here. Every, let's see what Proudy found out. Looks like he's been dead about three hours. That's since the time of the murder at three o'clock, or a little later. I want an autopsy performed as soon as possible. I'll do it the first thing in the morning. Hmm. Here's the removal order. Hmm. The boys ought to be along in a few minutes now. See you all later. Yeah. This is Valerie Norris, the receptionist. Miss Norris, in your position, you naturally see about Everyone who enters or leaves this house, do you not? Nearly everyone. Other duties take me away from the desk occasionally. Well, did you notice any outsiders come to the upstairs this afternoon? Yes. There was a girl who said she had an appointment with Dr. Rogers. I took her up to his office to wait for him. What was her name? Um, Miss um, Porter, that was it. Oh. What time did she leave? I really don't know. I didn't see her go. Really bring Dr. Rogers back. Okay. I uh, understand that Braun was stabbed to death. No, not exactly. His jugular vein was severed by a knife or some similar weapon. Well, uh, I don't see the jewel-handled dagger that Mr. Braun always used as a letter opener. It was always here on his desk. Uh, I know it wasn't here when I discovered the body. Here's the dark. Dr. Rogers, did you have an appointment with a... And Miss Porter here this afternoon? No, sir. But you do know Miss Porter, do you not? Oh, I am. She's a friend of Barbara Brown's. And you didn't see her this afternoon? No, sir. That's all, thank you. Ellery, did you see her when you came back? Why, I was looking for her when I found this. 
Well, how did she act when you talked to her, Miss Norris? She must have seemed panicky because I forced her to come to this house. She didn't look panicky to me. She acted as if she knew what she was doing. Well, that'll be all. Thank you, Miss Norris. Where does she live, Ellery? 1087 West 72nd Street. This is Inspector Queen. I want you to pick up a Nicky Porter at 1087 West 72nd Street. Yeah, if she's not there, get her fingerprints and start a search for her immediately. Yes, I want her held as a material witness in the Brown homicide case. We'll check her fingerprints with those we have here. Say, am I talking to myself? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Come here. Take a look at this. Oh, he must work here, too. We'll question him on our way out. What's your name? Amos. Do you work here all the time? Man cannot live without work. What do you do with that black canary? <laughs> Joseph is my only friend. Joseph, Joseph, don't eat that. You'll get the pip. You know that Mr. Braun is dead? All things must perish. What are you digging such a big hole for? I'm digging a grave. Whose grave? The earth is my mother. Look out you don't slip into your mother's lap. You better keep an eye on him, that old duck. He's not as crazy as he acts. I'm going down to headquarters with Billy for a while. I'll, I'll be a little late, and you'll be sure and have any whole dinner for me. Oh, good evening, Mr. Ellery. Hello, Annie. The young lady is still waiting in your study. Shall I set a place at the table for her? Oh, uh, no, don't bother about dinner, Annie. We'll all be dining out tonight. The inspector, too? That's right. By the way, he asked me to give you this money. He wants you to take your vacation now instead of next month. That's strange. Mr. Queen said he wanted me to go on my vacation when he took his. I know, but he ain't his money. He thinks he's going to be too busy to take any this year. Oh, that's too bad. Then I can go now? Uh, maybe I'd better hurry and pack and all before he changes his mind again. Sure, sure, go on. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ellery. I'll be back in two weeks. Have a nice time. Uh, goodbye. Hello. Did I sleep? I don't know what else you'd call it. Is it all right for me to go now? Sure, if you don't mind moving into jail. They can't really suspect me. They can't, but they do. By now, every cop in town's looking for you. Why'd you tell them I was there? I didn't have to. Norris, the receptionist, she told them. Did you touch anything in Braun's bedroom or in his study? No. Not that I remember. And what'd you do all the time you're locked up in there? Nothing much, just jotted down a few notes. Let's have a look at them. Oh, no. I'm going to use them for my next story. I'd be crazy to let you have them. Don't forget, we're competitors. I like your crust. You bawled me out when I told you my idea for getting a story out of Braun, and you go in and do it yourself. I don't know why I waste all this time trying to help you. Look, if you really want to help me, will you get me something to eat before I starve? I haven't had a bite since breakfast. And I never eat breakfast. Don't talk about food now. I won't talk about anything else until I get some. I can't fix anything for you here. Dad will be home soon. You mean your father lives here too? Sure, but don't let that worry you. That's the last place he'll look for you. I know this is the last place he's going to find me. I'm leaving. All right, but don't expect me to get you out of jail. Annie? Annie! Stay in there. No matter what happens, don't leave this room. I wonder what's the matter with that girl. Come on. Hello, Dad. Where's Annie? Uh, she isn't here. Why, well, I invited Vili for dinner. Well, uh, you know those folks of hers in Ohio? She got a telegram, one of them sick. Well, you know how I hate to eat out. She felt very badly about having to leave. Well, we can't help it, I suppose. She arranged for a good cook to be here first thing in the morning. Well, if Annie says she's a good cook, that's good enough for me. <laughs> you stay here, Vili, while I go and wash up. <laughs> well, we've got that brawn case wrapped up. Yes? Who killed him? That Porter girl. We took her fingerprints off a typewriter in her apartment and compared them with the prints found around the scene of the murder. She was in both of those rooms. Does that prove she did it? 
Well, it'll satisfy a jury. It was premeditated. She was lying in wait from behind that statue. Her fingerprints were all over. When she got the chance, she went into his bedroom, grabbed that dagger he used for a letter opener, and killed him. Now you're guessing. Oh, no. She left two fingerprints on the desk where she picked up the dagger. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You should have heard what I told the inspector. <laughs> it must have been very funny. Yeah. I said to him, Inspector, why do we have to look for that Porter girl? Give the job to Ellery. He found her once, he'll find her again. <laughs> you couldn't find her if she was standing right behind your back. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. <coughs> Say, tell you what to do. Let's go someplace where we can find a nice, good, big, thick, juicy steak. <laughs> I'll be leaving early in the morning. You tell that girl Annie sends over what to do, will you? I'll start her off right. Well, good night, son. Good night, Dad. I'm turning in early, too. I'm hungry. Did you bring me something to eat? I couldn't bring anything. Dad was with me. Not even a sandwich? But you had a big, thick steak. Shh, don't wake him up. You better go back to bed. In the morning, I'll fix you a swell breakfast. I want food, and I want it now. All right. All right. I remember. You're the girl who doesn't eat breakfast. Come on. We'll raid the kitchen. Well, you taste them. Good. Want some? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. I had dinner. I sure you had dinner. I waited and waited. And the longer you were gone, the bigger meal I thought you were getting. <laughs> no more crackers. What, the rest of the milk? Mm-mm. 
love. Say, what do you think your father'd say if he found out you turned his home into a hideout? Oh, I hate to think about it. So do I. You better get back to bed. Should we do something about these dishes? No, leave them for the maid. You know something, Hillary? What? I'm beginning to like being a murder suspect. As long as they don't catch me. sleeping on the couch. Uh, I uh, worked late last night and uh, I uh, stretched out a minute to think. I guess I must have dozed off. Yeah, well, you know it's after 7 o'clock. It is? Yes, I'll be leaving in a few minutes, but you've got hours to sleep yet. Why don't you get undressed and go to bed? Well, I'm not sleeping anymore. <laughs> oh, Dad, uh, yeah. do me a favor, will you? Why, well, certainly. When you get to Prouty's autopsy report, phone me what he found out. Yeah, I'd be glad to. You know, I'm interested in that case. I was out there yesterday and all. Why, naturally. I forgot I came in to get a razor blade. Charge me up with the razor blade, will you? Oh, and uh, tell that new cook when she comes to have dinner at 6 o'clock. Unless he's out of shaving cream. <laughs> I make a little slam and she balls me out for overbidding the hand. <laughs> All right, Swenson, we're ready. Whose idea of a joke is this? I didn't have anything to do with it. I never even looked at it. What won't they ask me to look into next? I'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary, Cornelia Mullins, and Rocky Taylor have no police record. All right, really. But checking back on them, I found out that Cornelia was a dancer before uh, she... A dancer? Before she went in for physical culture with Braun, and Rocky Taylor was the press agent for her last show. Where's the autopsy report? Where's the body? What do you think I am, a surgeon or a stone cutter? Say, hey, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the body you sent in for autopsy. But it isn't a body. It's a statue, do you hear? A statue! What am I supposed to do? You might uh, clean up the apartment, but stay away from phones and doorbells. And don't forget those dishes in the kitchen. Come on. Yes? Hello, Dad. What? Have they found the murderer? No, they've lost the body. Does that make it better or worse? Yes, I'll meet you there. Yes, right away, Dad. Where are you going? To the Braun place. Y you mean I was...
Hold it. Hold it a minute. Have you ever thought of trying one of those courses you advertise? This thing weighs two pounds more than a horse. I wish you'd hurry up and get your breath before old Lady Braun comes out and makes me open it. She suspects something or she wouldn't have kicked me out. Yeah. She figures that Braun had more than a professional interest in you. Oh, you know he meant nothing to me, honey. It's just the same. I'm a sap for letting you out of my sight. Well, I wouldn't go without you. Only one of us has to stay here and see that we don't get gypped. You know, that old will still in force. Let's get this out of here. Okay, you get things started and before you know it, I'll be with you. I think you're going. I'm driving Miss Mullins downtown. Oh, no, you're not. You're staying right here. Let's have a look in this trunk. Come on, let's get this out of here. Come on, hurry up. Come on, get moving. Come on, give him a hand, really. I've got it, Rocky. Open it up. I gave you orders not to leave here. Oh, but I'm afraid that's my fault, Inspector Queen. I ordered Miss Mullins to go. No one leaves these premises without my permission. What are you doing with this equipment? Mr. Braun gave it to me. I don't believe you. Those lamps are very valuable, and they'll be sold with the rest of the apparatus. They're mine, and I intend to use them in a health institute I'm going to start. You dare remove them, and I'll have you arrested. Oh, good morning, Inspector. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Any new developments? <laughs> the body's missing. I thought you had it removed from here yesterday. Yeah, that's what we thought. Sorry you had to overhear this, Miss Braun. We didn't want to distress you or your mother. I'll keep it from mother. Have you found Nikki Porter? Not yet. I know you're wrong about it. And if you do arrest her, I'll get the best lawyer in New York to defend her. I admire your loyalty, Miss Braun. Good morning, Inspector. How long have you been up here, friend? Ever since you phoned, sir. I think I've found what you're looking for. Where? Call Dr. Crowley. Yes, sir. When you get the autopsy report, we may have the solution. To the I problem. agree with you. Billy, tell Dr. Crowley to come himself. Right. Why do you need an autopsy when anyone can see that that guy died from a sore throat? Maybe somebody was feeding him poison for a week and then got impatient. We have to know those things. Hello, Doc. This is Bailey. I found something that belongs to you. The inspector wants you to come and get it so it won't be lost again. Okay, Flint, if that's a statue when we get down to the morgue this time, I'll take the rap for it. Hey, wait a minute! We'll phone headquarters. We lose the body. Then we find it. Then we lose it again. Only this time, the whole works. Body, wagon, and all. If they hadn't cut those telephone lines, they wouldn't have had such a head start on it. Say, how much longer have we got to wait for dinner? Sit down, Dad. I think it'd be upside down with Andy away. Good evening. Good evening. Say, uh, what's your name? Uh, the, uh, 
N N Nellie. She stutters a little. She's too good looking to be a good cook. Oh, <laughs> not bad. A little thick, but... You know, I like the way she seasoned it. Yes, sir? You forgot to bring the crackers. Crackers? I'm sorry, we're fresh out of crackers. We made a little progress today anyway. I got a line on that Nikki Porter. She's from Rochester. Did you check with the police there? Yeah, they're digging up a picture of her. I get it by wire photo tonight. Good. Say, would you mind bringing the rest of our dinner? Yes, sir. I am. Um, no, sir. Hey, what's the matter with that girl? Annie said she was good. What, no salad? Oh, oh you wanted salad? Well, at least the steak looks all right. is the most abominable steak I ever tasted. Mine's pretty good. You think so? Well, then you stay here and eat it. And here, you can eat mine, too. I'm eating out in the restaurant until Lanny gets back. And say, listen, you fire that girl. I'm afraid you've lost a customer. Why didn't you have a caterer send dinner in? Oh, wouldn't have made any difference. Now that he's getting my picture, I can't stay here anyway. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? The answer to the murder is in the Braun house. I'm going out there later and have another try at it. If I can't crack it tonight, you might as well give yourself up in the morning. It's not that. It's just that I'm afraid I'm getting you into more trouble. Don't worry. Everything's gone all right so far, hasn't it? Yes, but wait until my picture arrives from Rochester and your father identifies Nicky Porter as Nellie the cook. You won't grin like that when he finds out you've been hiding me in his own home. I think I can solve this case. I'm going to stay away from Dad until I do. Celery. We've been over the house and grounds for hours and hours, and we don't know any more now than when we came in. I'm going to have another look at the bedroom before we give up.
I may be crazy, but I think I've got something. I'll be back in a minute. Now, let's see. The sun comes through the window at about this angle between three and four in the afternoon. What of it? Mr. Braun didn't die of sunstroke. Don't argue. Let me have your bracelet. I to think it was a bird. I found a raven's feather on the inside of the window ledge. I'm going to call Dad. When he comes, keep out of sight. Wait for me in the car. Do you think you'll ever forgive me? For everything but that dinner. Looks like a five and ten cent store. I can understand the raven swiping shiny objects, but why the envelope? The sealing wax must have attracted his attention. Last will and testament. Well, if that bird hadn't stolen this dagger, and this will, we'd have found him in the bedroom. And we'd have known from the beginning that Braun committed suicide. I still think it's murder. What do you mean? Who stole the body? And why? Yeah. And where does that Nicky Porter fit in? Wait a minute. Maybe that old codger stole it to bury it on the estate. Look at him now. No, I spoke to him earlier this morning. He's digging that grave for himself when he dies. Well, I hope it fits. <laughs>
The inspector's waiting for you, Mr. Queen. Oh, fine. Uh, you better wait here. Sit down. I won't be long. Rowdy just finished the autopsy. Tell him what you found, Doc. That was due to loss of blood from a knife wound in the throat that severed the jugular vein. Could have been self-inflicted. There was no trace of poison. As a matter of fact, he was organically sound. Could easily live another 25 years. All of which proves that John Braun was murdered by Dr. Jim Rogers. Rogers? It was his diagnosis that convinced Braun he was suffering from an incurable disease. To prove his claim, he substituted stolen x-rays for the real ones knowing full well that the thought of a slow, agonizing death would drive a man like Braun to suicide. He knew an autopsy would expose him, so he stole the body twice to prevent one. Now I realize what you meant when you said that while it was suicide, it was murder also. Murder by psychology. Yeah, Rogers took a pretty cold-blooded way of removing any obstacle to his marriage to that Braun girl. Uh, what about the rest of the suspects? Uh, holding Zachary on embezzlement. He's been swindling Braun for years. We haven't any charge against the others. Hi, Ori. Hi, Inspector. Hi, Doc. I fished that body out of the river, and you'll never guess who it was. It was Dr. Rogers. How did you know? You'll read all about it in the papers. Uh, Dad, you still want Nicky Porter? What do we want an arm for? Oh, say, V, you can see if they tear up the warrant against that girl. Oh, say, and if they ever send that picture of hers, <laughs> you can put it in your scrapbook. <laughs> There's one more thing, Dad. Yeah? It's uh, about Nellie. Nellie? Why, you fired her last <laughs> night, didn't you? Uh, well, uh, I... Hey, what is she doing here? Well, that's what I wanted to tell you, Dad. You see, Nellie isn't Nellie. She's Nellie's... Ne uh, well, that's Nicky Porter. And you've had her hiding in my house? Now, wait a minute, Dad. I can explain everything. Hey, son, you, you better run along before I forget that you're grown up and take you out in the woodshed again. <laughs> Does he want to see me? No, I straightened everything out. You're free to go home or anywhere you like. I suppose I may as well go. I suppose so. It's been fun, Ellery. It has been fun, hasn't it? Goodbye, officer. Goodbye. Nikki. Yes, Ellery. Nikki, uh. I wanted to ask you... Uh, yes, Elry? Uh, well, maybe I have no right to say this, but... Go ahead and try. Uh, will you... Going down? Uh, will you be my secretary? Oh. Going down? All right. Wait till I give you some of my ideas. Your books will be terrific. Did you like the movie? I hope so. Because me, my wife Judy, and production manager Dan LeClaire, we enjoy bringing you these old black and white murder mysteries from the 1930s and 40s. And if you enjoy seeing them as much as we enjoy presenting them, we invite you to join us every Thursday and Friday night at 7 p.m. and other times during the week as our schedule allows. You can see the best of them right here, black and white murder mysteries on Hastings Mystery Theater. Good evening.